Hello and happy Tuesday, everyone. Um, we are excited to be back with you this week. Today we are talking about batch cooking. We're going to break it down for you, give you some examples of how we do it, how it makes our lives easier, and why it's really, really important um, to get your health under control, especially when you're dealing with arthritis or another autoimmune condition. But first, for those of you who don't know us, we'll just quickly introduce ourselves. I'm Jessica Melnick. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist, the founder of the Anti-Arthritis Method, and the host of the Happy Joints Arthritis Solutions Group. And I help people with various forms of arthritis get back to living their lives the way that they want to, not the way that they have to. And I'll hand it over to you, Casey. Yep, I am Casey Kephart. I am the founder of the Feel Good Formula. I work with women with all different types of autoimmune diseases to get back to the activities that you love to do, trash your symptoms, get your energy back. Um, and I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, where the sun always shines and the humidity is back. So that is just lovely. And it feels like Florida again. <laughs> Right on. We have a beautiful sunny day here as well. Not uh, mm. not humid. <laughs> it usually does not get humid here in Saskatchewan, but it is a beautiful day. So I'm enjoying all that long daylight hours and warmth and sunshine. Finally, it's mm. it been a long time coming. <laughs> yes, it sounds like it. So today, like I said, we're going to talk about batch cooking. And um, why are we talking about this? So this is something I think a lot of people um, overcomplicate. It's something that's very simple, but it just takes planning. So I know that saying, if we fail to plan, we plan to fail. I absolutely believe that that is 100% true, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to eating healthy and eating for what your body needs. When you have arthritis or an autoimmune condition, you have to plan ahead. And I know that for Casey and myself, our programs, that's like one of the main standbys of our programs is mm -hmm. planning ahead. And um, I know sometimes people are like, oh, I just like it's so boring. Like, what if I don't know what I'm going to want to eat or, you know, all the other excuses that we tell ourselves. Um, really, guys, it can be so much simpler than you may think. And it is just a matter of doing it. So yeah. it makes your life like I said, a million times easier because when you have stuff planned ahead of time, you can like keep things portioned out in your freezer that you just have to take out and thaw, you know, the night before. And then you can just add like side dishes, some veggies, salads, mm -hmm. whatever on the side. You save yourself so much time and energy. So you can come home from work and instead of having to make something from scratch, you can just come home and be like, oh, I have this already ready for me in the fridge. I just have to warm it up and I just have to like, you know, roast some vegetables on the side, you know, and make a salad or whatever it is. So it just makes life so much easier. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like cooking at the end of the day when I am tired. It's not my thing. If you love cooking, maybe that is some of the things that you like to do when you're, you're done a busy day. Maybe mm -hmm. Do. I think for a lot of people, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, like one more chore to do before I can relax for the evening, or I have to take my kids out, or I have all these other activities that are going on, and you're just like, I don't want to take the time to do this. Mm -hmm. So um, this makes life so much easier. Yeah. I'll yeah. Case. I'm, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> one thing you said is um, sometimes we don't know what we want to eat, right? And we don't know what we're going to be in a mood for because food is definitely a mood, right? Sometimes we want something savory and like a stew base. Sometimes we want to bite into a burger. That was me last night. Um, so we just don't know what mood we're going to be in. And that's the great thing about batch cooking, though, is you can have so many options in your freezer and just pull out that thing when you're ready and um, thaw it on the stove. If you're a microwave person, we'll talk about it, but do it in the microwave if that's your thing. Um, so there's plenty of options and we're going to go through how we do it just in our own lives, what our clients have been doing and what works for them. Um, Cause there's so many different ways of doing batch cooking and that you just need to find the one that works best for you. So, um, Jessica, I know you have like a really um, precise method that you use. So why don't you start with that? 
Yeah, and I don't even know even like how precise it is. It's just it's like I don't even really think about it anymore because I, I just like anything I you know I make it part of my my weekly plan mm -hmm. and I just make it a priority and I make it something that it's just an it's a non negotiable. So I plan usually before the weekend. So usually like by Friday. I just pick out a few different dishes that I would like to plan and have made for the following week. So depending on the size of your family or how many people you're cooking for, you're going to decide on like how many recipes that you need to make. Um, also how many portions of those recipes, if you're going to need to double it or triple it, I often just double things uh, for myself. It's just myself and my partner. Um, just because if you're going to be cooking anyways, it just makes it so much easier to just make double so that you just have more on hand and then like i said you can just pull it out of the freezer when you need it and just don't even have to think about it so mm -hmm. that's what i do i just pick what i want to have for the following week and so then over the course of like friday saturday i can make sure that i run out and get the groceries that i need for that day based on those recipes and then sunday is when i would do those uh, cooking those uh, meals and i'm also lucky my partner cooks as well so he helps me make those things too so it's just an easy thing so then during the week you know after a long day of work it's like okay well we have this already prepared and i'm just gonna make some veggies to go along with it and it's really really that simple um it saves me so much time and so much energy i also love to have a healthy dessert or if I'm honest, you guys, I probably have four different types of like paleo or AIP desserts in my freezer right now, because sometimes I just don't know what I'm going to feel like having. And I like it's to have mood. Mood. And same with breakfast. I like that too. I often keep like mm -hmm. breakfast in the freezer. So um, I just like, I like to have options and I can just pull something out and it's there instead of eating you know, if I'm having, if I'm craving something sweet, instead of eating something that's, you know, yummy or but like a conventional dessert, but I, I know how terrible it makes me feel. Um, and so if I have something already in my freezer, then I can just reach for something like that. And it doesn't give me a stomach ache. It doesn't give me acne. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need a nap. You know, it doesn't give me jitters all the other things that doesn't be brain fog, all the things that come along with eating like conventional treats. Mm -hmm. um, that's my, one of my biggest tips is just having things that, you know, you really enjoy that are actually a healthy option available. Yeah, definitely. Um, my method has changed so many times over the years, just because my life has changed so many times over the years. And that's the great thing about batch cooking. Um, so when I was first starting this journey, I'd batch cook literally everything. I'd spend maybe half a day on a Sunday. I'd batch cook all my meat. I'd batch cook pounds of veggies. Um, I can't remember if I was doing desserts or not, um, but I guarantee you if I was, I was batch cooking all of that too. And my, my freezer was set, my refrigerator was set with all of the containers. I'd literally just grab all my containers for the next day. I was commuting to college. so. I'd eat my breakfast in the car with uh, my container and lunch and dinner. So that really worked out for me because I was driving three hours um, round trip to college. So I was eating in my car, I was coming home late and uh, batch cooking kind of saved my life with keeping me on track and help manage my autoimmune disease. Um, I'm still busy, but I'm not commuting three hours round trip. So what I do now is um, I order from ButcherBox, if, any, if anybody knows what ButcherBox is, but it's grass-fed, uh, pasture-raised, humanely raised uh, meat, and it comes to you frozen in this box, comes right to your doorstep. And I just put it all in my freezer, and that's good for about four to six weeks, just depending how much I'm eating out and eating at other people's places and things like that. Um, and so what I'll do now is I'm kind of just batch cooking on the go and I'll take out two to three pounds of meat, put them in my refrigerator. Let's say I have no more food left on Wednesday. I'll cook three pounds of meat while I'm cooking my dinner. I'll cook a lot of veggies while I'm cooking my dinner. Again, just like Jessica said, you know, you make more than you need to, and that's what I'm doing. 
that'll last me for a couple of days. When that is about to run out, I'll do the same thing. So I'm cooking more times throughout the day, but I have that time, you know, at 12 o'clock or at six o'clock now, because I, I work from home all day. Um, and that seems to work really well for me. Um, if I want desserts, maybe I'll do that on the weekend and then freeze them or put them in the refrigerator. So for me, it's just like a, a do as you go right now, because I don't want to spend all day on my weekends off batch cooking. So that goes to show that it's really up to you and how you want to um, batch cook for your week. But I would definitely, definitely recommend not cooking every single meal every single day because that's going to get old. You're going to get tired of it. And what happens when you're feeling um, tired one day or you have to go drive the kids to practice and then go pick up something at TJ Maxx and then go drive something to your husband and like your day just keeps going and you're like, oh shoot, I don't have any time to cook my meal today. What do I do? That's where you're going to fail potentially. We're not saying you will, but that's the easiest time to fail and just go through the drive-through or grab your favorite snack from the gas station or whatever it is you do. So in my program with my clients, um, how I laid out batch cooking for them just to try out is cook their or batch cook their breakfast, lunch and snacks and desserts um, on the weekend or any day that you have off in time. Um, and then cook your cook your dinners at home if that's what works for you. So um, and then you can have the dinners that you cooked for leftovers for breakfast or lunch the next day. And it kind of just flows like that. Um, but again, that's just one way. So, um, if you have questions about, um, what we're doing or how we're doing it or what you should do and your schedule and, um, things like that, comment below and let us know. We're happy to help and happy to provide some insight because we've definitely seen what we do in different transitions of our lives, but, we also know what our clients have been doing and what's worked for other people that may be in the similar situation as you. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I wanted to mention too, that I was thinking about when Casey, you were saying you were commuting to college. Um, I know for myself, when I worked out of the home, I always packed my lunch with me. So I just invested in a nice, um, you know, a decent sized lunch tote bag mm -hmm. and some ice packs you know, just to keep it easy. So I'm, I'm taking this stuff with me because um, obviously if you have an autoimmune condition, we don't recommend that you're eating gluten. So you're not going to be eating sandwiches that you yep. just, you don't need to refrigerate and things like that. So it's good to carry something that you can keep, you know, you have ice packs and you keep it cold and um, just invest in something that's, that's decent and works well, because that's going to be a huge, especially, you know, if you are going places where, you know, they're not going to have food that is going to be something that you can eat without feeling awful. And um, so you really have to rely on yourself to have your meals prepared and to bring them with you. So it's nice to have things that you can tote your food around mm -hmm. in. And same thing to invest in a nice water bottle, get, get a good stainless steel water bottle, um, you know, sometimes an insulated one is nice because it keeps your water colder, especially if you live in like a warm climate, like Casey does, um, here it's cold most of the time. So my water stays cold usually most of the year, but just invest in something nice that you can carry with you. And then it's also a good reminder uh, when it comes to water, just to, to drink that more often, but that's a whole other topic. I won't go into that today. Um, but like you said, Casey, let us know what you think. Let us know what works for you or, or where you're stuck because we are seasoned pros at doing this. We've been batch cooking for, I don't, I don't over a decade each, I'm sure. <laughs> and, uh, we have lots of tips and tricks to make it as easy and seamless as possible. Yep, exactly. Good note on the tote and the water bottle and like easily packed because if you are feeling out of sorts while you're driving or while you're at your a uh, place of work or business and you're and it's making you like dread eating or packing your lunch that's going to affect your batch cooking and you staying on track um so i i love that idea jessica mine was just like thrown in my backpack but that didn't bug me at the time um also remember silverware if you're driving and eating i've done that multiple times and i'm just like picking it out of my container and eating it um one thing that I thought of when you said that, though, is um, 
heating methods and storing methods. So like heating, we talk about this not so often as I probably like, but Jessica and I often eat our things cold. I don't know if that makes us weird or not, but like literally we just grab it out of the refrigerator and we just eat it cold. It's easy for us. We like the taste. It's just, you know, we have work to do. Let's, let's eat, nourish our bodies and move on with our day. However, um, you know, some people do really like a hot plate meal, which is fine. Um, more times than not, if you can heat it on the stove, heat it in a stainless steel pan or a cast iron pan and, um, take that time to heat it instead of the microwave, which zaps nutrients out of it. So there's a little nap by me, sorry. Um, and then the other thing would be, uh, the types of containers you store these in. So back in the day when I didn't know any better, I was just storing these in like the cheapest plastic containers that I have. And, you know, you put it in there hot and then you store it in the fridge and that plastic kind of leaks out into your food. Um, so if you have the ability to or you have some at home already, put them in glass containers, put them in um, silicone bags or um, something other than plastic. If you can, just a little pro tip there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um... No, I think those are really great tips. I don't think I have anything else to mm -hmm. add to that. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's batch cooking is something that I think sometimes we overthink and overcomplicate and it really doesn't have to be at all. So if you're having, if you're struggling and you're, you know, finding that you're like, ah, oh, I've been wanting to do batch cooking for a long time, but I'm just reluctant to let us know why. And we'd be happy to work, uh, give you some tips and help you work through that. Yeah. And we both go over this in more detail in our programs too. So don't think like we're just letting you hang, hang dry. And if you, if you sign up for our programs, we go over it in more detail and step-by-step step what to do. Um, so we both have programs on this. We both um, definitely teach this and make it a part of your daily, your weekly routine. Um, so if you want to know more about our programs and how we integrate this or anything about them, please let us know. I know I have a webinar. Jessica does webinars to teach as well. Um, so please let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll be yeah. back Thursday. We will. And we're talking about weight loss Thursday. Yeah. Always an exciting topic. And I think Jessica and I are really, um, really passionate about the weight loss subject with autoimmune disease. So um, it's probably not going to be what you think. We're not going to tell you how to lose weight. We're going to tell you um, other cool things about weight loss with autoimmune disease. Yeah, we have a much different take on things. So mm -hmm. you won't miss it. And of course, if you can't attend live, just watch the replay in our groups. Yep. So right. Have an awesome Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll see you guys back on Thursday. Bye.